you guys, it's Daisy. Welcome back to SBS. This week's theme is of course Europe. Now I live in Europe, um, not surprising from the accent. I am in fact British English from the UK. This is what you need to know about the English countryside. how to survive the English countryside. Step one, it is always cold, so you gotta wear appropriate clothing. This is not appropriate. Okay, so now that we are appropriately clothed, we have to put on the appropriate footwear. Let's go. So we have wellies, aka Wellington boots. These are what you need to wear on a dog walk or any other walk really outside because it's muddy. Okay, so I'm just warning you guys, I haven't got my monitor, it's not working, so I can't actually see what I look like. Great, but now we're ready to go outside, so, not to waste this adventure, I'm taking the dogs. This is Marnie, and Ollie, come on, come on. and this is Ollie. It would help if the sister would pick up the phone. Survival tip number whatever. Make sure your sister has a phone on her at all times. Make sure you have your phone on you all times, because you don't know when a sheep is going to ram into you and break your legs. Shouldn't pick up. Okay, I'll text her. Here's a concept. Money can be exchanged for goods and services. Done. This is why you wear wellies, you see? Oh, there's a sheep peeing. The sound of the river's making me want to pee. It's been 15 minutes. The only food I have is a Diet Coke and a fudge bar. Will I survive? You can't see it, but here are names people have written in the stone. They have they've carved their names out to the stone. It's obviously dead. We have to survive this harsh environment. My name will be one of them one day. And if you can't hear any of this, then I'm sorry. I'll just put subtitles up. Speed five more minutes, I'm out of supplies. Do you know what this means? This means we have to forage for food and water. Because this is how you survive the English countryside. So straight away I found a water source. I'm in fact a survival expert. Let's see if this water is drinkable. I'm joking, I'm not going to drink that. I'm gonna get some kind of disease, aren't I? Next, we have some sort of vegetation, but this has thorns on, so my gut instinct is not to eat it. Let's see if we can find something else. Oh, watch your footing. It's a little slippy here. Now, the average person will have died of hypothermia by now, but of course, I'm Daisy Taylor, the survival expert. It's been a whole 25 minutes. This looks more edible, let's see. So we found some edible looking plants. The first thing you've got to do is taste it to see if it's poisonous. Now this one's quite a dry plant, so um, let's just let's just take a little bit. Give it, give it a chew, you know. That one's not so good, so we're going to the next. Just see, because there's quite there's not a lot of nutrition in this. You've got to you've got to eat quite a bit to get the nutritious value. No, it's not good. You know what? It's been half an hour in the wilderness, and I'm still alive, so I think that's a win for Daisy. One to Daisy, nil to nature. All right, let's go home. There you go. So I'm safely back about 40 minutes later. Let me just tell you, do not try this at home. This is an extremely dangerous adventure. Not one of us would have come out alive just realised that I made a rookie mistake. I went out when it was about to get dark, as you can see. Not the best idea. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Daisy Taylor. You've been watching Spare Banana Society. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.